Hey everyone, this is Neon Polygons, and today I want to give you a quick look at the Divers 2000 CX-1 Dreamcast Television. Quite a mouthful to say, but for those of you who don't know what this is, essentially it's a CRT with a built-in Dreamcast inside. This came out in the year 2000, only in Japan, and at a retail price of $800. So for a 13-inch display, it actually came at quite a high price tag, even considering that it had a built-in Dreamcast. Uh, at the time, I believe uh, the Dreamcast sold for a retail of about $200, and most 13-inch screen televisions sold approximately at a retail price of about $250 to $300. So even at its highest end, uh, you were still paying quite a premium for getting a built-in Dreamcast uh, inside a CRT. Now, a little bit of, I guess, uh, of some, I guess, things to note. This is not exactly a Sega product. This is a Fuji product in which they licensed Sega technology to be put into the CRT. So kind of think uh, along the lines of the JVC Mega CD player or the Pioneer Laser Active in which they more or less uh, licensed C Sega technology to be put in a product that they were manufacturing. So while it is officially a Sega licensed uh, asset it is not technically a Sega official product, if that makes any sense. Um, or I guess like another good example of this would be kind of the Hitachi Sega Saturns uh, that or Hitachi V Saturns, which were essentially Hitachi produce units that had Sega Saturn technology put into them. So what is it that makes this kind of a premium CRT? Well, uh, the obvious answer is just look at it. It has a very cool aesthetic design. Uh, and this art style is called, is called Googie art. Um, so what is Googie art style? Um, think retro futuristic designs. And the best example of that would be the Jetsons. So it essentially is not what people assumed the future was going to look like in the year 3000. It was more or less just kind of a best way I can kind of phrase it, is a 1950s art style in which they uh, were, I guess, idealizing what modern uh, aesthetics would be in terms of, like, curvatures and uh, very bold and over-exaggerated uh, features. So kind of some good examples of that are if you were to look at kind of classic McDonald's stores from the 1960s and 1950s or kind of designs that you would see at the World's Fair from the 1960s. So again, this is a television set that came out in the year 2000, which has a gooky art style to it. And even televisions that came out in the 1950s and the 1960s or in the 70s, you won't see actually a lot of CRTs that were kind of designed in kind of like this aesthetic. So from that standpoint, it is actually not really kind of, I guess you don't really can kind of look at this as a normal CRT, but almost look at it as a work of art as I can best phrase it. Now, some other cool features on this that I think many of you who are looking at this video probably know is its built-in LED system. So the way how this works is in any time you're using the Dreamcast on the system, it, the LEDs on both sides of the unit would pulsate and uh, alternate based upon the BPM of whatever was playing. Now, of things to kind of like realize if you're going to try to get one of these units, they're not exactly rare. Okay, so I know many people will say that there's only 200 units of these sold and more than likely the manufacturing run of them probably was maybe about 1,000 to 2,000 in order to ensure that this could be uh, sold at a profit. Um, and the reason I say 1,000 or 2,000 units more than likely manufactured is uh, in order to kind of get these or in order for Fuji to have, have got these built out, at scale at a reasonable price that they could, you know, um, make a profit at. Uh, usually most manufacturing runs uh, for CRTs during that period were at least like a thousand to two thousand units. But again, do think about this as not as a CRT or buying this as a video game system or even as a CRT, but generally this is kind of being sold as kind of a center art piece that was more so, at, 
you know, would be sold as an aesthetic as opposed to functionality. Case in point of that is these two antennas or these four antennas that are protrude on the outer end of the television set, they serve no functional purpose whatsoever. <laughs> um, so many people think that these actually light up. They don't. They serve no purpose aside from a visual aesthetic to the CRT. Now, in terms of like looking at the unit itself, for a 13 inch display, it is actually quite heavy. It's about 30 pounds. Um, I actually have a 12, 13 inch CRT over there in the corner of, uh, in my room. And that weighs probably about 20 pounds. So it is actually heavier than your typical 13 inch CRT. It's actually also uh, larger than your typical 13 inch CRT. From top to bottom, uh, from base to the top antenna point, it measures about 17 inches. From uh, side to side, it's about 15 inches. And from front to back, as you'll see over here, it's about 19 inches. So it's actually quite a large television set for uh, a 13 inch screen or 13 inch screen that takes up quite a footprint. Now, when purchasing these units, one thing that you should keep in mind is that they are now essentially at a 20 year point or 20 years of, uh, you know, have been out there for essentially 20 years by this standpoint. And with that, unfortunately, with as with other CRTs, that could potentially mean they start to break down. This unit particularly, I've had it for three years and can count you on two hands the amount of times I've actually turned it on and played games on it. And when I've actually uh, used it, I haven't played it in long durations. And one of the things I'm starting to notice now, uh, even when I was making this video, was actually I was having problems just trying to get it to play Dreamcast games in general. Um, I've actually tried about like four different Japanese Dreamcast games before I got it to finally uh, play on one, which is this game. And it was incredibly frustrating in which uh, I was able to get it into Dreamcast mode, but I was not able to actually play a game properly. Um, it would load the game and then unfortunately kind of just give me no display. Uh, I would put in a music CD to see if at least it was reading the laser and that did work. So I, I do know the laser works on this, um, but there is tending to be a problem in terms of like it actually playing Dreamcast games. Um, another area that I'm starting to notice is that I'm starting to notice some discoloration in the CRTs, uh, or sorry, on the CRT display, particularly in this area and this area. Um, again, I haven't played it, you know, played this unit very, you know, very long or many times. And so it's a little bit odd that I'm starting to see some discolorations in the CRT, uh, from when I first received it about three years ago. Now I actually purchased this at an estate sale where the... I guess the state, the person who was selling it, used to be working at a, Jap a Japanese travel agency. And thus, uh, I was able to kind of get this at a very <laughs> low price than what you would typically see it sell for. Um, so as I was previously saying that many people will think these units are rare, but not quite. I'd probably estimate there are at least 2,000 in the wild. Uh, and in fact, you can actually find them quite easily on eBay. You'll normally see them like pop up every few months, but they go for such a high price tag that people tend to think that they are exceptionally rare. Um, you can find them. You just have to be willing, uh, and they are easy to find. You just have to be willing to pay the high price tag. And of those who do get these units, they generally don't tend to sell them again. So, um, and if you are outside of Japan, you know, just think about the shipping cost, they'll be extraordinarily high. And then, you know, shipping these across, uh, you know, overseas, especially here to America, that's a risky proposition that you can, you know, actually get this, you know, damage quite easily uh, during transit. So some of the things to keep in mind for when you're trying to purchase these units is you might want to ask the seller, can it still play Dreamcast games? Um, and you might want to ask, can it play Dreamcast games upon CX-1 uh, boot? What that means is essentially as soon as you get into Dreamcast mode, will it pay a Dreamcast game immediately um, from the home screen? As I said, I'm now starting to have issues with my unit and I do believe it's the Dreamcast unit that's breaking down, not the CRT. Um, you can still play video games and Dreamcast games on this by you know, obviously using the AV inputs on it. 
But when you do that, the LEDs will not work. Again, the LED functionality of the television set only works upon Dreamcast mode. So some things to also keep in mind is that I have noticed that uh, it has a very poor ventilation. The ventilation on the unit is actually on the top. And so unfortunately, it has that means the hot air has to actually come upwards uh, to be released. And so as I'm feeling the TV, it is actually like quite hot. Uh, one of the things I've also noticed is that when I've opened the, uh, or more recently, as I've been opening the dish tray, there's kind of an odd chloride smell to it. Uh, so then kind of like uh, when you're at a pool. And that's only something I started to notice recently uh, with, uh, as my C CX-1 has started to have some issues as of late. So uh, I'm not sure if that's kind of a signal that there may be something kind of like going wrong inside the unit, but it's just something to be of note for anyone out there who's considering getting one of these units or already has one and is trying to figure out if there might be a potential issue coming up. Now, would I recommend getting one of these things? If you're a hardcore collector, I'd say absolutely. Um, I would get this more as a visual art piece as opposed to an actual video game display unit. Um, even if you couldn't get these working, these actually would make a really cool centerpiece for any kind of game room, any kind of recreation room. In fact, I would say like any room in general, it just looks really cool. You won't see anything like it. And, uh, you know, I would probably say that this is, to me, just for the visual aesthetic of how cool it looks is well worth, I guess, its price tag. Now, if you're getting this to play Dreamcast games, I highly advise against doing so. Again, there are cheaper means of doing playing Dreamcast games and more reliable ways of playing Dreamcast games, and this is not one of them. As a Sega fan, would I get this? And I would actually say no. And the reason, again, I say that is because technically this is not an official Sega product. This is a officially licensed Sega technology. So, you know, this is not technically part of Sega's history. This is not technically a Sega product officially released by them. This is a product released by Fuji that just happens to use Dreamcast technology built in. Anyways, if you have any questions or want to know more about like this television set, feel free to leave a comment below and I would be happy to answer it. And um, for those of you who actually have a Divers 2000, I'd love to know your experience with it so far and if you've encountered any of the issues that I have had, particularly the chloride smell and the problems of playing Dreamcast games. Oh, and one last note. A lot of people will say that you need to have the television remote or any of the uh, accessories to play uh, Dreamcast mode on this TV. That's not necessarily true. In fact, all you need to do is actually, when you need to turn this TV, push up on it as a press to pushing down. When you push up on this button, it will automatically bring in the Dreamcast CX1 mode. And from there, you'll be able to boot up uh, your Dreamcast games or you know whatever you want to do in the Dreamcast home screen. Anyways, this is Neon Polygons. Thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And catch you all again soon.